Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling um, Review Series. This is the March 6th edition, 1982. Again, we're going to have about 200 of these by the time we're done. I'm super excited about that. This is a first run for me through the Mid-Atlantic Series, just not something I had access to, and so of course the Peacock Network makes that possible. Wish they'd put Florida and other... Uh, eventually, there is a YouTube Memphis version, which... Has me excited because, well, Memphis in itself is is exciting and, well, potentially could be. Um, so super excited about doing that someday, too. But anyway, 1982, uh, the, 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 area of, the area of March we move into, um, March 6th, and uh, Austin Idol, new to the area, he's very rare. Roddy Piper also, uh, his, his commentary... I think he's the first major heel commentator that they ever have in, in wrestling of major note. Of course, everybody remembers Jesse Ventura from the WWF days, but uh, he's there beforehand. Austin Idol and Vinny Valentino is the opening bout for today. Uh, before that, though, there is a, a bit of a you know go-around with uh, Jack Briscoe and, um, and Roddy Piper. The Briscoe-Piper thing... Kind of really interesting. The Briscoes, of course, uh, Jack and Jerry uh, coming forward and basically Briscoe trying to put uh, Piper in his place as the Mid-Atlantic champion. But the Briscoes talk about wanting the tag team championships and wanting to win city tournaments. Of course, the city tournaments, still $25,000, $25,000 in 1982, probably 50000 now. Who knows? But anyway, um, you know, kind of seeing that uh, Austin Idol match. For what it is, it is a squash. That's what it's meant to be. Austin Idol continues to be one of the best in the area. An amazing robe for uh, for Idol by far. And um, kind of moving forward, Austin Idol, Vinny Valentino. One-sided match, not a big surprise there. You're not going to see a guy like Austin Idol um, taking a bunch of backward steps or anything like that. Uh, power moves by Idol and Idol continuing to be a pretty aggressive guy around the around the turn, so to speak. Cinches up on the uh, shoulders and the um, you know the beginning of kind of running things around. Idol continuing to be a uh, uh, running behind with the hammerlock and manages to get a. Um, get a um, modified sleeper, you know, puts things forward for full Nelson, uh, full Nelson sleeper type maneuver. Uh, Austin Idol really aggressive at the time. Also a tremendous talker. A lot of people say he's not that great in the ring. Mike McCord, of course, his original gimmick in the 70s, whatever, coming into the Austin Idol thing in the early 80s. Didn't realize it was that early. Thought it was uh, 83, 84, but um, maybe that's the Memphis debut. Anyway, he's uh, bouncing his man around the ring here pretty aggressively, assertively, and uh, Idol continuing to be um, beaten up a little bit by Vinny Valentino. Uh, Idol also continuing to try to crotch his man on the uh, buckle on the inside or the uh, steel post on the outside and eventually gets a figure four victory there. Jake Roberts continuing to talk about wanting to put an end to Sergeant Slaughter. Also t promoting the tag team tournament. Tag team tournament seems to be the major thing here. Uh, but uh, also Roberts uh, in and manages to talk about uh, aligning with just about anybody to get rid of Slaughter. Slaughter and uh, Roberts around the, the um, time is a pretty major thing. Piper, Piper running in on that, on, on that series. Lots of brawling, um, actual video footage from the uh, local arenas, probably the Charlotte Coliseum, if I remember right. I, I'm not necessarily as knowledgeable about um, arenas, the look of the arenas uh, in the Mid-Atlantic Territory as I should be back in the you know 80, early 80s. But anyway, uh, we move to the next in the series, which is Rick Benford against Dave Peterson. Again, squash match. Uh, Extraordinary here. Benford, relatively new. I think this might actually be his first time through. Both guys jockeying for position with um, hard shots along the way and uh, snapmare takeovers, basic maneuvers. Uh, Peterson has been here a little bit before. Benford, I think, might be his first or second time through. Peterson, a little bit 
more known and eventually managing to uh, get his man up and off the off the corner area. Attempted to drop toe hold, doesn't get everything he wants on that. Uh, dropping of the knee, and then again, um, Peterson managing to get the victory here. We go to uh, local area uh, promos, the local area announcer. Basically, Austin Idol says he is the future of the area. They stop talking about him and um, uh, the Nikita, uh, not Nikita, yeah, um, Ivan Koloff, not Nikita Koloff. Too early for Nikita yet, a couple of years away. Um, but, um, you know, um, Koloff still talking about the television championship, still talking about wanting to win the tag team tournament. They kind of have downplayed the uh, idol and um, idol and Koloff team just a little bit over what they were doing a couple weeks before. Maybe they weren't as passionate about it. Also, um, Ray Stevens has become a bit of a announcer here. Um, Ole Anderson is mocking the fact that anyone thinks that they wouldn't become uh, tag team champions. Yet again, there is a pull-apart brawl with Anderson, Hansen, and uh, Jimmy Valiant. Valiant, uh, for the second week in a row, it seems, uh, has interfered in the process of the um, nature of uh, the the deal with the um, team of Anderson and and whatever. Uh, basically, Ray Stevens interviews um, uh, Jimmy Valiant. Valiant says he wants to get rid of everybody here. Uh, then we go to Austin Idol, who's more in the singles vein, although he's still talking about kind of teaming with, um, you know, the Russian Bear. Russian Bear continues to talk about being a champion, talking about wanting wanting to get with everybody. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter starts talking about uh, wanting to fight Ricky Steamboat and Ric Flair, so that's kind of an interesting run there. U.S. Champion Slaughter, nearly six months into his reign. Um, then we have... More in the highlights for the tag team division, the Briscoes, Jack and Jerry Briscoe, facing off against Mike Miller and Bill White. Uh, White and Miller both large enough guys that they can challenge the Briscoes, and it looks relatively convincing. I wouldn't say it looks like a million bucks, but it looks convincing enough. Hard shots along the way and basic maneuvers here. Um, trying to get a run there. Um Simplistic things in that nature, and uh, the Briscoes obviously cut the ring off. Obviously, technical wrestlers, and uh, Jack Briscoe, of course, former NWA champion, so he is going to be better on the mat. Also, the spinning toe hold is used. Briscoe's taking things to the mat, tying guys up, bow and arrow, basic maneuvers. Uh, obviously, you can imagine kind of fighting out from underneath. Enhancement match being brought into being kind of next level by the Briscoes using arm bars and leg locks and uh, taking a part of uh, adversaries. Virtually everyone would consider Jack Briscoe to be one of the best of all time. Jerry Briscoe, of course, doing the Stooges thing that he's known for with the WWF, um, at least by modern day fans, but obviously not uh, as um, processed or as. Um, enjoyable as we would imagine. Uh, Briscoe and Barry Windham endorsing each other in local area promos, uh, or uh, uh, Blackjack Mulligan Jr., as it were. The, the Windham name doesn't come around, I don't think, till Florida. But anyway, we move to next in the series of matches. Sergeant Slaughter is up here, and he is uh, facing off in, in an enhancement match with... Um, Slaughter and Cranoodle, actually, against Anthony and Richie. Uh, Richie manages a cross body uh, with his opponent a little bit here. Uh, Richie fights back. Richie has gotten previous, Ron Richie, gotten uh, some previous um, uh, temporary wins. Tony Anthony, of course, becomes a major Southern star in Alabama, Smoky Mountain Wrestling and all of that. But here, enhancement talent, um, the... the the privates of Nelson and Cornoodle and all of that still standing behind Slaughter. Slaughter getting the tag team match off the ground and continuing to talk about wanting to win the tag team tournament a little bit, but still focused more on Piper and um, and Flair at the time. Uh, the lock-in of the Cobra Clutch and uh, 
not to mention, uh, can you know, go behind and chin locks and other basic maneuvers. Slaughter finally gets the victory for his tandem. One, two, three, and we are good to go. And we close out on that note. And we will be back with more right after this.